Welcome to today's Hashtag Wednesdays Weekly, a weekly information session in collaboration with voluntary sector and public sector partners. In today's session, you'll learn more about inequalities within cancer care, and the session will be delivered by Kirsty from 10GM. Over to you, Kirsty. Great, thank you. Um, so just before we begin, um, I'm just going to introduce myself. So I'm Kirsty Rollinson Groves, and I'm the VCSC Strategic Lead for Cancer and Inequalities. I'm housed in 10GM as the organisation, and I work across the voluntary sector in Greater Manchester to support it and get it more linked in to the cancer system, um, start to see where opportunities are to link in better and support the cancer system in our communities. Today's um, presentation, it's going to be a really quick overview, if you like, of exploring cancer and inequalities as a main subject heading. Um, it shouldn't be too long, the presentation, um, and then will be questions and answers later, and my contact details will be on as well. So, so afterwards, if you think of anything, you can just drop me an email. So I'm just going to share my screen, um, if you bear with me a second. Okay, so that should be sharing okay now. So I've done my little introduction um, and I said that I work for 10GM, but who and what is 10GM? So 10GM is a partnership of four local infrastructure organisations who operate strategically and collaborati collaboratively with each other across a vast range of different relationships. The four partners cover six areas of Greater Manchester, which is Bolton, so Bolton CBS, Manchester, which is Mac Central, Action Together covering Oldham, Rochdale in Tameside, and Salford CBS in Salford. Together, they champion the local VCSE sector with a shared purpose to improve the economic, social, and environmental well being of people and communities across all 10 areas of Greater Manchester. And we are looking at cancer inequalities as part of 10GM's role. Can't do this alone. So 10GM is working in collaboration with the Greater Manchester Cancer Alliance, partners from across the wider health system and wider VCSE sector to achieve permanent reduction in inequalities and inequities faced within Greater Manchester. As a region, we do have a strong track record of taking action against tackling inequalities and improving health and well-being. But when we focus on cancer and we put a spotlight on cancer, there's a real clear opportunity and a real clear demand that more needs to be done. So the whole Cancer and Inequalities project will work towards finding these innovative ways of tackling inequalities, addressing social, environmental, and economic determinants of wider health and well-being, and with an aim to ensure active VCSE participation and parity in the strategic work to enhance equality and equity. So when we say that, it's about making sure that the VCSE um, sector is an active participant in decision making, and we can influence decision makers um, in in respect of of the cancer care system and the cancer programmes and innovations that are designed. But what are inequalities in cancer? So as a broad view, health inequalities, they are avoidable, they're unfair, and they cause systemic differences between the health of different groups of people. They exist because of systemic variations in accessibility, quality, and experience of health and care services. The wider determinants of health, which I spoke of in the previous slide, so when we look at things like employment, education and income, these can all impact somebody's health. And then we've also got individual behaviours or lifestyle behaviours as some people know them as. And these are things associated with an increased risk of developing a cancer. And namely, the main two, are those that smoke and those that have poor diet and obesity increase their risk of developing cancers. So when we do look at um, the, the free, it is all about that healthcare and access and experience, wider determinants of health, so other parts of our life that impact our health, and then down on an in individual level, 
that choice of behaviours and the issues that we have with some people, finding those behaviours easier to settle into than others. So within the cancer system, um, the inequalities can rep them represent themselves at different parts of the pathway, if you like. So if we look at the cancer system of somebody who sat at home, maybe with, with a sign or symptom of cancer, so I don't know, like a, a prolonged cough, all the way through of accessing healthcare, getting a GP appointment, going through diagnostics, experiencing treatment, um, rehabilitation after treatment, all the way up to end of life. So when we look at the inequalities, they can present themselves with the risk of somebody's getting cancer. So we know certain populations and certain community groups are at higher risk, a higher prevalence of cancer in some of those. And that can be due to things like genetic factors, but it can also be used, um, it can also be down to those individual behaviors that we spoke about. The proportion of people diagnosed at an early stage. So early diagnosis and catching cancer early is key to positive outcomes. The earlier you catch cancer, the better likelihood of better treatments, better outcomes, recovery. So the proportion of people diagnosed at that stage one and two cancers is really important. And we know for evidence that certain population groups and certain communities are more likely to present at a later stage, which has a negative impact on their cancer and on their cancer outcomes. Access and experience of diagnosis, treatment and care. So when we look at that cancer pathway, this is probably the biggest bulk of it, where most people will spend their time in this diagnosis, treatment and care part of the pathway. And the access and experience to that varies greatly across Greater Manchester by borough, by population group, by community. So there's huge inequalities when we look at this part. And it's about trying to identify those main inequalities and the ones that we can influence and the ones that we can support and making sure that we can reduce those. Access to research. So research is key in cancer, especially when we look at therapies and targeted therapies. But when we look at the people in the research studies, they're not representative of the Great Manchester population. So there's a huge inequality there that if we've not got access to research, then we don't know what that therapy and what that treatment would react to on certain population groups. So we're looking at how we can better increase diversity in the research um, clinical trials, if you like, and making sure that it is representative of a greater Manchester population. There's a huge inequality in representation within the workforce as well. So we know that somebody's experience of care is greatly improved if the workforce looks like them and represents them. And we know that the NHS is working towards diversifying their workforce and making it more representative of the people they serve. So again, it's another area that makes that experience and treatment, experience of your treatment a lot better if the workforce does look like you and can understand you. So there is lots and lots of statistics around inequalities and we picked up some of the main ones here which really highlight the inequalities specifically in cancer. Because we know that inequalities across the healthcare system are vast and we could spend years talking about them. Um, but we wanted to really pick the ones that reflect a cancer care inequality. So we looked at deprivation and 20,000 more cancer cases um, are diagnosed in the most deprived areas of the United Kingdom. That's really relevant for Greater Manchester because we know we've got some of the most deprived communities in the borough of Greater Manchester as well. People from black and Asian ethnicities can wait up to six days longer for a diagnosis compared to um, people from a white background. And when we look at cancer, um, we know that speed of diagnosis is really important and moving through that pathway quickly can feel scary. It really does feel scary if you are on that pathway. There's appointments coming at your left, right and centre. 
but getting through that and getting your cancer diagnosis early really supports that early diagnosis and that timely presentation, which we've said earlier, really impacts somebody's outcomes and positive experience. So for Black and Asian ethnicities to wait on average six days longer is a huge inequality. When we look at people's experience of cancer care, then um, when we do national surveys, the most common factor associated with negative care experience is ethnicity. Um, so we spoke about earlier about the, the weight for diagnosis, but I also mentioned about workforce and that having a representative workforce can really improve somebody's experience of care. So that's why it's one of the NHS's long-term objectives is to diversify its workforce. Lesbian, gay and bisexual people were less likely to receive information and support they need after receiving a diagnosis of cancer. So again, there's an inequity here of information and experience of care that people from the LGBTQ plus community are saying that they're not receiving information and support that is relevant to them. So it's about trying to find, <coughs> excuse me, trying to improve those resources to make sure that they are meeting everybody's needs but they are culturally sensitive and specific and that they really do help the person that's getting that information. It can't be a blanket approach. 33% of LGBTQ plus community members report that their GP does not meet their needs. So again, back to that early diagnosis and getting, getting diagnosed early. If the GP doesn't meet your needs, you're not going to feel comfortable trying to get that appointment because you know that if you're trying to talk through something, they're not going to meet your needs. So in, in that instance, where does that person go for that healthcare and, what, and how do they get referred quickly and move through that pathway quickly? There's a higher probability of three or more pre-referral consultations found among younger patients and those from black communities and especially women. So again, the first stop to getting referred for a possible cancer diagnosis is a GP. And if you have to go back two to three times more to get that referral, you're delaying this pathway. And there's a delay in this pathway, sorry, and it's going to then impact our experience. It's going to potentially impact our diagnosis rate and our stage of diagnosis. So it's looking at why is that? Why, why are younger people having to go back two or three times more? Why are people from black communities and women having to go back more often? Is it something around communication? Um, is it something around not knowing what to say to the, to the doctor or, or being scared to say certain things? Um, and trying to find ways that we can tackle that inequality. An increase in age is the biggest risk factor for people developing cancer which we know cancer, it, it doesn't discriminate. It does affect everybody of all ages, but we find the higher prevalence in the older population. But we also know that the older population are less likely to recognize the warning signs of cancer and less likely to present early and get that early diagnosis. So again, it's how we get that education and that messaging out to that population in the best format. Um, there's a big swing, isn't there, towards digital at the moment, um, but we know that that might not sit with an older population. So it's how we, we change that format. So when we break down the cancer pathway a little bit more and we look at things that we can potentially impact and influence, with those early signs and symptoms, we're looking at things like the health literacy across Greater Manchester, improve, making sure that anything to do with education and messaging that goes out across across the region um, is tested for its health literacy age. Um, the number, the age escapes me at the moment, but across Greater Manchester, we know the reading age isn't as high as we think it is. So it's using things um, to make sure that leaflets and messaging that goes out actually is, is understandable. You know, not everybody's a clinician and not everybody <laughs> can pick up on certain words. Um, health awareness, making sure that that education is being done and people are aware of early signs and symptoms. Um, when we look at GP appointments, what are the challenges to getting this appointment, this early appointment? 
again, is it things to do with language or the way that appointments are made and booked, um, being able to effectively communicate concerns and also knowing what to ask for. So educating the community a little bit about the cancer system and how it works and what they need to ask for in order to get those quicker appointments sometimes helps. When we look at diagnosis, so once somebody is put on a suspected cancer referral, um, they then have to go for more tests and more tests usually in a hospital or secondary care setting. And sometimes that means that patients have to travel a long, long way. Um, they may not be able to go to their local hospital for some tests because it is specialised testing and that tends to be centralised. So it's how we can impact that and how we can ensure that people who may not have the finances to travel that far can access travel schemes. Um, multiple appointments. So unfortunately, um, not every cancer pathway has like a one-stop shop where everything's done at once. People are required to go multiple times to usually different sites. And that can be tr troublesome if somebody's got dependents or if somebody's on shift work and they can't get the time off. Um, so it's, again, trying to work with the system to make that better and trying to get them to understand that not everybody can make five or six appointments. And the financial impact of all of this, if people are taking time off work, if people are travelling far, parking charges, travel charges, and trying to look at that. Then when we go into the treatment phase, it's often outside of the community they live in. So we all know the Christie Hospital is a massive treatment centre in Manchester, but we do have many others around Greater Manchester. But sometimes you, you can't be treated in the community you live in. Um, if that's an operation, it means that your family all have to travel far to get to visit you if you're there for a while. If it's radiotherapy or cancer, again, it's that multiple appointments, which may be not your local hospital. So again, it's looking at the inequalities there and how we can help. We've said about mul um, multiple appointments, the cultural competencies of the staff we've mentioned, workforce isn't always representative. And um, so it's about education and trying to diversify that workforce and making sure that there is culturally appropriate information and resources. So whether that's imagery that needs changing or language that needs to be translated, making sure that that is done correctly. And then when we look at living with on and or beyond cancer, so people can live with cancer for many more years now with medical advances um, and people who, who go into remission and are recovering from cancer still need support. So we're looking to make sure that there's um, better equality in things like appropriate support groups. So that might mean culturally appropriate, language appropriate, it might be that it's in the area that's appropriate. Appropriate information and support, again, reflecting the person that's getting that information and support, making sure it's relevant to them. There's not a one size fits all for this. And that we know that it has to be very tailored and personalized. That there is appropriate follow-up and care and appropriate follow-up care for each patient. And personalised care is huge. It really does improve our experience of cancer and our experience of treatment. And we know that is 100 times better if it is personalised to you. If your needs, if your cultural needs, if your um, personal needs are taken care of and considered before any well-being and support is offered. So how are we doing this? Um, one is um, one part of it is part of my job role. And what we found is that there's so many BCSE organizations across Greater Manchester that have crucial insight and understanding of the barriers of their communities in relation to health and well-being. And whilst not cancer specialists, they still have that insight. And it's really important that we develop an understanding and environment of which in which these groups are operating and against the integrated care system. So we can, so the aim is to provide leadership for the BCSE sector and bring it together and focus on cancer and inequality work and initiatives. 
champion the sector as a partner in the cancer care system. That's all about that identifying the priorities for our communities and then identifying where they link to the opportunities in the cancer care system to better support our communities. Providing that insight and intelligence from the VCSE sector and our communities around those barriers and specific and, and very specifics for our communities. And also supporting the cancer system to reach into our communities. So that's around the, the best example there is around like the messaging and things like that. If we see messaging that's going out, which is not going to hit home with our communities, we're able to fit that fit, feed that back and explain why that certain piece of information is not going to be useful for our communities. And if they make X or Y changes, it could hit home. So finally, I think I think this is my final slide. Um, how we can get how you can get involved. So we're creating a cancer and inequalities network made up of VCSE leaders and sector organizations interested in working more closely with the cancer care system and supporting their communities with cancer. We've got a small grants fund, which is around about to launch round two in about four or five weeks, um, which will be shared widely. And that's to identify innovations and programs which focus on early diagnosis. Um, there's some training that is available free of charge for VCSE sector to equip people to have conversations about cancer. There's also an opportunity to train the presenter in that as well. So then people can go and deliver scripted talks and workshops across their communities. And when we've got an ask from the cancer care system or the Greater Manchester Cancer Alliance to be involved in research or insight groups or community partnerships, we can get that information out to that network and people can say they're keen to be involved in that um, and put yourselves forwards. There's usually funding attached to that for time um, and, and costs usually, um, but it's a way that we can really improve that access to research and really improve that better resources for our communities. So there's a few links there um, where more information can be found. So um, 10 GM has a dedicated cancer and inequalities page. Um, it does have a grants page when the grants are live. Like, like I said, it's... Um, just oh. the last slide, sorry, I, I missed the uh, last two points, if you don't mind. Oh, sorry. Yeah, this. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Just that, that one. Was it? Yeah, yeah. I'll just take a quick snapshot so I don't forget. Yes, of course. No worries, Malik. Share it, share it with you. Thank you. Sorry. Apologies. No worries. <laughs> um. So, yeah. So the 10 GM website has a dedicated cancer and inequalities work page, which is updated regularly. When we have a grants program, which is live, like I said, it's going to go live probably towards the end of February for round two. It has a dedicated page for that. And my email address is there as well. So I'll just stop sharing.